In this video, we'll look at calculating confidence, <laughs> calculating p-values for hypothesis tests. When we look at example 9.9, .9, and you can see that p-value is just the probability of a sample mean being greater than or equal to the sample mean that was collected in the right tail test case. Uh, in the left-tailed test case, it's a probability that it's less than or equal to that number, and we'll see the two-tailed case, we kind of combine those. So first thing you want to do is identify if you have a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed test. You can use the alternative hypothesis for that. Since this uh, alternative hypothesis points to the right, that's a right-tailed test, so we would draw a picture such as we see here. And the uh, sampling distribution is what we're looking at. So the mean of the sampling distribution for the mean is just the, the population mean. And that's going to be 15, which is the number that you see up in the hypotheses statements. Right? And the standard deviation is uh, going to be the uh, population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So our population standard deviation is 0.5. We just divide by the square root of the sample size, square root of 10. We get the adjusted standard deviation. So that's the mean and standard deviation for the sampling distribution. Uh, then we have the sample mean, and the sample mean will mark off the tail. So now we just want to find what the p-value is. And the p-value is just the area to the right of that sample mean for this normal distribution. So for area to the right, we do 1 minus norm dist. And then uh, remember, norm dist finds the area to the left. So as we subtract it from 1. And then use the mean and standard deviation that we have there. And cumulative is 1. And this number is 0, effectively, because it's so small that uh, the calculator or computer cannot tell the difference. Um, if you took this far enough, you may actually find a non-zero digit, but you'd have to go very far. I guess we uh, still don't have any non-zero digits, so and that's as many as we can get. Um, so it's not exactly zero, but it's effectively zero. Anyway. Um, let's get this back to the way it should be. This is a right-tailed case, and uh, if it was a left-tailed case, then we would uh, have a sample mean that was less than 15. So say we had a left-tailed test and we were getting a sample mean of 14 then we would just want the regular old norm disk command because we'd want area to the left because it's a left tail so we would get that we've got a very small number and so we would uh, reject the null hypothesis in this case as well now if it's a two-tailed test either way with the uh, sample mean larger or smaller you would need to double the p-value here so in a two-tailed test you would do two times that so if it was a two-tailed test and we had that sample mean, we would get that p-value. Now, all this works pretty much the same in the case of the proportions. You just got to remember how we did sampling distributions for proportions. And 
the uh, number 15 in the hypothesis is in this case 0.5 in this problem 9.17 so you still use that number that shows up in your hypotheses um, it's now the population proportion right not the mean So we put in that 0.5 there. And the standard deviation is going to be calculated with that same standard deviation formula from uh, confidence intervals. And that is where we have square root of p times 1 minus p divided by the sample size of this problem, 100. That's going to be our standard deviation. And you remember that from the confidence interval calculations. And this is not a sample mean, it's now a sample proportion. Now the sample proportion in this problem is 0.53. And if you look at the uh, p-value, right, you'd want the uh, area to the right, since the proportion is greater than that sample mean it creates a right tail. So you want 1 minus that. It gets you that area of that tail. But this is actually a two-tailed test. So this shows how that works. Right? Use the fact that the sample is larger than the population value, the hypothesis value, to determine it's a right-tailed test. If it's less than, right, like up here 14 was, 14 was less than 15, so we did a left-tailed test. So if that sample number is bigger than the hypothesis number, then you do a right tail. If it's less than, you do a left tail. If your test happens to be a two-tailed test, then you need to take that p-value and double it. And let's just do that here. And we'll take that number and double it times 2. And that is the p-value that they calculate themselves, 5485. So um, let's go ahead and make this a little nicer. We're going to gonna do uh, all of them. So p-values, we'll do uh, left-tailed right-tailed and two-tailed. Alright, so the left-tailed is just the uh, norm dist. Alright, so area to the left. And the right tailed is 1 minus norm dist. And then the two tailed case would be the uh, double the smaller of these two. So 2 times the minimum of those two numbers. And that's because when your sample mean is uh, on one side, it forces one of these p-values to be ridiculously large. And so you always want the smaller of the two p-values there. All right. So then going back to where it was 17, you see that uh, we have zeros here. Maybe something more reasonable like 15.5. Right? Then you get the, these would be good p valid p-values, and then this number wouldn't. So these typically these p-values are very small. They're close to 0 0.1, 0 0.01. And uh, the smaller they are, the more confident we are in rejecting the null. Uh, the larger they are, the less confident we are. Um, so we can more or less steal this right here and put it right there. Just make sure that they're lined up. Yep. So this is a little p-value calculator that you can... Uh, use yourself and uh, I'll make available. And again, these things would be inputs and these are outputs.
templates. And we'll make a more user-friendly calculator in the uh, hypothesis testing video next.